Hello and welcome to this new series that I'm doing on the HP calculators. You, this will help you to learn, if you own one of these calculators, to really understand it and be able to use it. And whether you own one or not, this will teach you a whole lot about maths and calculators and how calculators do maths. So let's jump right into it. Introducing the HP calculators. It started in the 80s with the HP 48 and it went right through until the present time when we have the HP Prime. But we have chosen to use the HP um, 50G as our example calculator to do the examples on. Today we are doing stuff that concerns the whole series right away back from the first calculator to give you an understanding of how these calculators are designed and how they operate. The first thing that you have to realize is that every action that the calculator can perform is referred to as an operation. So the calculator has, everything is an operation, many, many operations. A subset of operations is referred to as commands. If an operation is actually a command, then it means that this operation can be included in a program. So you may understand the subset referred to as commands is operations that can be used in programs, when writing programs for the calculator. Now, a subset of commands is functions. A function is a command that can actually be used in an algebraic expression. So you're well familiar with functions in mathematics. It has the same principle. An analytic function, on the other hand, is a special type of function that has both an inverse and derivative. And this is once again true of mathematics, whether you're using a calculator or not. Now let us look at the calculator in more detail. In the red, we've circled several operations, such as enter, delete, and clear. That allows you to clear the screen or delete just the last entry or enter. These are operations or actions only. They cannot be used in programs, so they're at the bottom of the pile. I've circled a, a, a command there in green, and that would be store or recall. What that does is that stores a result in a memory or recalls a result from memory. Now, memory is very, very flexible in this calculator, much as it is in a computer. And uh, uh, there's many things that you can store and recall from the memory, as we are going to see in a moment. Next, we come to the functions. I've circled two of the functions in blue. Uh, pi and uh, summation is are functions that can be included in algebraic objects. And of course, there are others like i and e, um, i the operator for complex numbers, and e the exponential number. So those are also functions. Now when we come to analytic functions, they are in yellow. Analytic functions would be sine, cosine, and tan and their various other derivatives because they have inverse and derivatives. Those are referred to as analytic functions. Now we are going to concern ourselves with the various types of objects that the calculator can handle. An object is a storable entity in memory. So you can store various objects. You can store a real number as a variable. So that is one type of object, a real number object. You can store a complex number as a variable, and there we see that our complex number consists of two parts, either an x and a y if we're dealing in the 
a rectangular mode or an angle and a magnitude if we're dealing in the uh, spherical mode or what is called the polar notation. Then of course we can handle binary integers because we may be just trying to represent um, some sort of byte or byte sequence and uh, this would be similar to the base n type of calculations that most other calculators can do where you can store it in hexadecimal, octal, binary or whatever number system you want. So we see an entry there in hexadecimal and we use the number sign in front of it to indicate that that is um, in the category of binary integers. Then of course the calculator can store arrays and this is uh, in the form of matrices or vectors. So we can have uh, column matrices, we can have square matrices, we can have vectors and these all fall under the category of subscripted arrays. The calculator has also the capabilities to store names. We may want to be able to reference various other things with names. And we can call a name and that will reference an object. And these are always enclosed in single tick marks. And while I've, in, while I've introduced, say, two variable names of A1 or B2, you are not limited to such short names. Your names can be long, they can be descriptive, they can be in uppercase, lowercase, and be quite useful to you. Algebraic objects are basically algebra expressions. And there you can see that we have a complete equation stored as an algebraic object. Now that algebraic object contains three variables, period, length, and g. So it would be expected that when this algebraic object is executed, there would be variables that would tell you what length and g is. There would also be a variable for period, which would be filled in with the result of executing or evaluating, as it's called in Hewlett-Packard terms, evaluating your algebraic object. Now that is also stored in tick marks. The delimiters that we use to indicate these objects are very important, as you will see in a minute. Now what separates an algebraic object from an expression, sorry, what well, from an uh, equation from an expression is whether the algebraic object contains the equal sign or not. If you have the an equal sign is found in your algebraic object, then clearly you have a left and a right part, and that it becomes an equation. If there is no equal sign in your algebraic object, then it evaluates to an expression. So there's a subtle difference there between expressions and equations when you're actually doing your work through the calculator. Programs now, the delimiter for programs is this double arrow, as you can see, two, two arrows. Uh, that is the delimiter that you use when you're writing your programs. And the, the syntax for programs, the mathematical syntax for doing programs on the HP48 is very easy to learn and uh, very, very useful. Um, it utilizes the... It utilizes the RPN notation in most cases, which makes it very easy to, to write very advanced programs in a very compact way. Strings. Now, clearly you can see that strings are no different in this um, calculator than they are in any other computer system. You can put anything inside of a string, and it uses the double um, quotation marks which is also usually the delimiter for strings in most other programming languages. We can, uh, we can accommodate lists. What kind of a calculator would we be unless we can deal with lists? Lists are very important in mathematics, and we use braces for our list, which is 
some, which is the same thing we use in the regular mathematics. And there we have a list that contains several um, elements. Now, graphic objects are denoted by the word graphic and then a number n multiplied by m. So if we call up a graphic object, we will see that unless we display it in the graphic environment. And the m by n, you n by m, you can guess it. That is the horizontal and vertical pixels of your graphic. Your graphics can be of different size, just like they can be in the computer. And uh, just like how we say uh, HD, and we have a resolution, and we have 640 by 480, and we have um, is it, uh, 1080p, and so we, our resolution of our graphic objects is the horizontal pixels by the vertical pixels. And then unit objects is another type of objects we can have in the calculator. And these are processed differently to just simple real numbers uh, because real numbers are complex numbers because a unit object is associated with various units. Now, you know what they are in physics, kilogram, time, seconds, meters, kilometers, miles, and many, 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 many more pounds. So the calculator will do unit conversions automatically for you between one, um, one and another. So we would use a capital A for amps and a capital V for volts, just like we would in our regular writing of expressions that require units. But of course, we don't have to use the unit mode in the calculator. We can just do it with numbers. Um, the unit mode complicates things a little bit in certain types of calculations, but there would be other times when you might want to use your units throughout the calculation. Now, the last one we're going to look at today is the directory objects. And uh, the directory objects, if we put a directory object, call it up, it really just consists of a number of other objects. And the reason why we have the directory objects nested in this manner is because the calculator works with directories, which are folders, basically, in the same way that a computer does. We can put folders within folders within folders. And of course, there is a root folder in which everything goes. So this type of um, recursive structure permits us to have a directory object which we can manipulate in the way we manipulate all objects on the calculator. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes show and we hope you will be with us for part two. See you in the next video.